Hi guys, and welcome back to another drawing session. Today I thought I'd do something a bit more relaxed, kind of more like a sketchbook session. I'm thinking this channel will be a mix of longer pieces and story times, as well as shorter sessions where I draw and just kind of chat with you. Today I thought I'd do one of the latter and draw a little gelatinous cube. I haven't actually fought a gelatinous cube as a player yet, but they are a pretty iconic D&D foe. I also wanted to play around with the transparency modes in Clip Studio Paint, and the jelly texture works really well for that. Because you're working with something that's sort of translucent, you can mess around with a lot of the different lighting modes, and that's something that I want to practice because they're a little bit different here than they are in Photoshop and Paint Tool Sci, and I want to familiarize myself with them a little bit more. As enemies go, I think these guys make for really interesting combat. You're more likely to encounter these guys in tighter spaces like dungeons or sewers, which means that you have to get close to them and that almost always runs the risk of getting sucked into the cube. You'll also have to get close to them to do damage or pull your allies or other stuck items out of the cube so you're always at risk of getting trapped particularly scary for smaller parties especially since if everyone gets stuck inside the cube you have to race to try and escape before you all run out of air. Scary stuff and probably could accidentally TPK a group if you're not careful. I think it also makes for interesting roleplay inside of combat because a lot of the time in other D&D combat you're fighting bandits or goblins and there's usually something that they want, be it gold or food, that they're fighting you to have control over, but a gelatinous cube doesn't really have any of those desires. It just kind of is. It does the dungeon Roomba thing and it melts whatever it absorbs like a slime mold. It's like kind of sentient, but not really. So if you're looking to have a party bonding session where you all just wail on something and don't feel bad about taking it down, this could be a, a good choice for that, I think. Recently, I've been sketching up a lot of fun fantasy weapons and some cute versions of classic D&D enemies as well. I'm working on ideas for new sticker designs. I do have a few stickers available over in my shop already. If you're interested, I'll link it in the description below. But I really want to make a new series. I think it would be fun to do some really iconic enemies like a little gelatinous cube and a few fun kinds of mimic and maybe like a cutesy little dragon. I think that could be fun. Lately I've been researching sticker manufacturers that make unique finishes so that I can do things like make uh, the weapon stickers with like a metal finish to them or do a gelatinous cube that's kind of a clear jelly so it has that blue tint but the sticker itself is clear. I think for the actual sticker I want to do a cuter and more simplified design for the gelatinous cube, but I still really like how this piece came out. Maybe I'll do it as a little postcard print or something. If you guys are into that, let me know. I think it would be cute to do a full set of weapons eventually, maybe like 6 to 12 different types because there's maces and short swords and bows and daggers. and. I could have a lot of fun making different designs for that sort of thing. I actually found on Internet Archive a really cool encyclopedia of weapons, so I've been using that as inspiration for a lot of the designs. I'll link that in the description too if you want to use it as a resource for your game. Probably be good for, for DMs too when you're stocking your shops with different items for your players. I actually feel like maybe I should look through Internet Archive a little bit more because I really like having reference books, and I used to take them out from the library sometimes, but obviously in COVID that's not really an option, but they seem to have a pretty decent selection of stuff. I'll have to uh, poke around a little bit more and let you guys know what I find. If I uh, track down anything good, I'll uh, try to keep linking things in the description, or set up a ongoing list somewhere that I keep updated so that people can access cool resources. That'd be nice. The lighting in this piece was really interesting to work on because you have this translucent object that has things 
inside of it. Uh, I'm actually using a couple of different layers of the color base for the cube, one that is behind the objects and one that is in front of them, so that I can try to really create that sense that they're suspended inside of it. I'm also using a softer lighting effect on the gem and the skull here. It's a little more blended out than the light I'm using on the outside of the cube, both because I think the cube kind of filters the light a little bit and diffuses it, and also because the cube has a really shiny finish on the outside, so it creates some contrast in lighting that makes for a more interesting final piece and also gets the textures of the items across in the final work. I'm also adding some shadows to the items to try and create a sense of space around them so that you can tell whether they're closer or further from you and closer or further from the ground. With a translucent object like this, I want it to feel like it has some physicality, so that sense of perspective is really important in giving the things that you're drawing some real physical weight to them. Also added in some fun details on the sword here. I wanted to give the edge a little bit of an oxidized finish so it looks like it's just starting to rust inside the acidic cube. I think adding little details like that can give your drawings a lot of personality and also make things feel a little bit more real, so I try to think of things like that to, to add in whenever I can. As I make some more forward progress on the set of stickers, I'll keep you guys posted on the list of things that I'm planning on doing. I think I'll do maybe half a dozen weapons to start with and half a dozen monsters. I think that would be a good mix of characters and items to get started with. I think it'll be really cool to record the process for those designs as well because then when they're finished I can show you guys both the process of making the designs and also the physical products. We can do a little cutaway and I'll film the actual physical stickers in my studio space and we can kind of see the process from start to finish. Maybe I'll even include some info on making the packaging. I think that could be a lot of fun. And with that last bit of shadow and highlight, I think I'm done. I'm pretty happy with how this came out. It's a little bit more detailed than I want to do for the final sticker designs, but I still think it's really cute and I'll probably use a lot of these lighting effects again on the actual design. I'll keep you guys posted on the progress of that and hopefully I'll have another update for you pretty soon. Thank you so much for sticking with me till the end of this speed paint, and uh, I hope you're having a great week. See you in the next one, guys. Bye.